the top three lower body exercises for people over the age of 40 are as follows. Box squats, driving a sled, and hip thrusts. Now, why are those Ooh, the best controversial exercises? Man, controversial. I like it. I'm here's gonna, why. I'm going to take a big disagree. Here's why, <laughs> they're, here's why those are the what best. What about walking? Wow. Now, of course, this is very general, right? I'm oh, saying yeah. just generally over 40, but here's why. I can't wait for the comments we, on this. We Here's why. The, the, the biggest considerations with people over the age of 40 are risk versus reward. And box squats are still barbell squats, but you do remove a lot of the risk because of the pausing on the squat, right? There's no changing direction where you have to like change your tension. So mm -hmm. injury risk goes way down. Wow. Driving a sled, super functional, doesn't damage the body. That's the only one I agree with. Hip thrust, hip thrust, that Fuck posterior thrust. chain, posterior chain. Fuck hip thrust. You got to do it. Get out of here with that, it. bro. No. Tell me you don't agree with this. I mean, Justin yeah, the, you do. Did he you does. help this list? No, no, no. I need something explosive though. I want to add like a kettlebell swing in there or something that's like uh, moving fast. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say it's a lower body exercise. Hip yeah. thrust, remember box squats. Remember that time on the podcast, Adam, when you said Justin and I were better trainers than you? <laughs> <laughs> Can we put a clip of that in there, That's Andrew? A, just, just I mean, the box it. squat is just for the show, bro. For, for <laughs> strength and yeah, low that risk. That was me practicing yeah. humility. How do I sound That's humble? It. Yeah, that's me, oh that's me practice. Okay, so <laughs> do, you, do you see why I listed those uh, as as the, no, some okay. of the best ones? No, okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, lo I, love, I love it for, I mean, it's going to be great for the gram. We're going to get all kinds of fucking heat for this. Yeah. So mm. I can't wait for people to just What's lambast What's your list? Well, yeah, were you going to say lunges or split squats? I would have a deadlift on there uh, or or if and or if not a deadlift a a uh hex bar deadlift i think that's a great that's gotta be i mean that's close that's a good one that's that, that good would one definitely that would definitely replace hip thrust for me rip, rip it's your, doesn't you're like getting that, you're getting all the benefits you're getting in a, a hip thrust but it, way more functional and can build what I, I like that way better hmm. uh i like the driving the sled um, and I would have put like a lunge. Yeah, I in love there. sled drive. I like a lo a lunge or a step up has to be there. I, those are all. Those all are definitely. I agree. Are in the running. Here's why. Look, I put box squats because, um, like barbell squats just are phenomenal. Just general overall. I know why you're doing it. Yeah. I know there's. I know there's a concern with, uh, you know, the elderly population or somebody who has got all kinds of issues. These people are over forty. We're all over forty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> We're well, hey, <laughs> I'm trying to support your argument for that because like, all of us in here be squatting. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody in here be doing box squats because do. they can't do a full squat. No, I, you know, so so I've been doing more box. I do squats too, but I do more box squats than squats these days because I could still train really heavy. Like today, I was doing with 400 pounds. And it's just way, the risk is so much lower because I can lower There's myself, so, okay. pause, come back up. And so now barbell squats are the, are, are the best. Okay. That, it's just bottom line, but the risk versus reward is, is skewed a little bit more towards risk than a box squat. Is. We just have to be very careful about how we communicate this because of course. it's very nuanced what you're saying because yes. it, yeah. and it also contradicts what we talk about. Right. So one of the things that we always preach to our community is that even if you can't, so let's say you're 60 and you can't squat, you can't deadlift and do those movements. The goal should be to get to a point where you can. Yes. So if you're doing the movements you're talking about, it's not, oh, just give up and never do deadlifts or squats ever again. It's you can utilize these mm -hmm. movements that you're suggesting for the the risk versus reward. This is a super, argument. it's obviously a very general statement. By the way, the reason, you know why I started talking about box squats this way? When we interviewed um, Stan Efferding, mm -hmm. Stan Efferding is one of the strongest uh, pro bodybuilders, or he might even be the strongest pro bodybuilder of all time. And he said, and which was, this was on camera and then off camera. I asked him about this. And he goes, I do a lot more box squatting these days than I do traditional squats because I could still train really heavy. And it's just, it just, it's a lot safer um, in terms of risk. And I thought about it. I'm like, he's right. I mean, when I do box squats, yeah. I can go real heavy. Um, and uh, it, it just doesn't seem to, I just don't seem to have the, like I said, the risk of injury or pain that I do with barbell squats. I don't think you should stop barbell squats. And again, this is super general, you know, over yeah. 40, like there's such a wide yeah, I just, variance. So the, I just cautioned that advice because, okay, and even with that statement, what Stan Efferding is saying, it's like, okay, I, I do a lot more box squats because I can go heavy because, uh, you know, uh, because when I go deep with heavier loads, I tend to hurt myself. And so I'm, I'm going to, so, or lighten the load and continue to go deep squatting and work on mobility. Like that's- Yeah, but that's not nearly as viral. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Top three exercises. <laughs> yeah, just, Light squats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turn I, it off. Turn I off mean, the show. I mean, you're definitely going to spin everybody like a top with yeah. those three like that because it's not but what think we of the, would normally think say. Think of the benefits you would get from a barbell squat and then think of the benefits you'd get from a good 
uh, same depth box squat because you can lower, right? You can get a bench, you can go a little lower, a little higher. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all they're pretty close. Okay, it's from almost a, from, it, from a okay. muscle building perspective, yes. Even but, from functional and strength, like the carryover, like your box squat goes up, so does your barbell squat. Your barbell squat goes up, so does your box squat. It's so close that uh, the carryover and the, the 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 functional strength and all that stuff is. I mean, I don't want to say identical because it's not. It's not identical, but it's just it's pretty damn close. It's pretty so damn close. so. Kyle is training a couple of my family members right now. And one of their frustrations with him, and he, they're all they're all north of 50. Yeah. Okay. One of their frustrations, and it's so funny when they, they communicate to me thinking that I'm going to defend them against yeah. Kyle and go be like, you know, well, to, to Kyle, you need to go push my aunt and yeah. my, my, my mother-in-law harder and, and, and load them more. And he continues to take them through more and more mobility work and telling them like, no, we're just... We're not there yet. You need to do more of this. You need to do more of that. And and it's he's they, a good trainer. Yeah. And they want they want him to push the weight and push more uh because that's what they think is going to get them better results. And he continues to stick to his guns and tell them that they need to work on these. They they just lack the mobility. He's like, there's no reason for me. Sure, I could load a box squat on you just so I could put more weight and challenge that. Or I can continue to work on a greater range of motion or depth in your squat. And that's going to be far more beneficial from an overall health perspective and longevity. Does it, it the way he's going is not going to build muscle faster because he's not doing the heavy loaded box squats. Oh, I'll, I'll argue that it will, because if he does it wrong, they'll hurt themselves. They're not going to get faster results doing mm -hmm. it wrong. Yeah. By the way, I'm here in the morning and I watch him train. He knows he's very good. Yeah. He really is. A, he's a really good trainer. No, I know. That's why I defended him yeah. when they were all red, thought I was going to jump on, to, to yeah. jump on their bed. I was like, no, nah, what you need to do is fucking listen to your trainer. That's yeah. what I said. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, again, like I, and I'm kind of milling this over because it takes me a second to kind of think of the characteristics. Like I really, Really want for like the person that's over 40 and, yeah. and that's why i said like something fast but like you know for me like i like those choices so i'd like to box squats for for the the by loaded um you know being able to really focus on strength and like mm -hmm. that's something that again to your point of like it kind of reducing some bit of the risk um i find value in that one but um in terms of like adding in the instability component, that's where I would probably lean more towards like a Bulgarian split squat as a follow up to that. But then also the sled drive, 100. percent I'm on board yeah. with that. So I like this hex hex bar deadlift. I like the sled. We can all agree uh, on the sled, yeah. and then a Bulgarian or a lunge. So here's why so you I got you have a it, you have a stability component in that unilateral work for them. They can build tremendous strength on yeah. Bulgarian squats just like they can on a on a box squat. And and you have stability that's involved in that. So what's you can the, buy your speed, the hip the hip thrust? Explain your, the yeah the hex, hex bar. No, oh, oh, why he okay, wants so that? So first off, to be controversial. First, no, no, no. Here's <laughs> why. Look, first off, to the 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 reason why I put sled and I didn't include a split stance. Extra, although, I, look, Bulgarians and lunges and all, those are all phenomenal. So you get volume in the quads. Well, like, not just that, but that is a split stance extra driving a sled. Uh, is yeah, yeah. T torquing the, you do, you, the, you the pelvis. You can, yeah, you can make that case That's a little. That's why I you put can, that. You can make a little bit of that and, case. And, and a sled, By the way, the sled also takes care of your, your swings because you could do that with speed. Yeah, you can run with it. it also, you, you could run it with that. It also trains the foot and the ankle and the We're all in the, hey, the yeah, Everybody but, in here is on the same the hip thrust, you could, you could argue too, like doing a, a kettlebell swing. You know, I'm doing the same here's, kind of- Here's why I put the hip thrust. Hip hinging. Okay. It, hip thrust, floor bridges, very similar, whatever. I put hip thrust because it's more of a, you know, obviously more of a muscle builder. It is one of the best back protecting exercises you can do in general population mm. with people who maybe lack the mobility, strength, and stability to do other exercises. I could do a hip thrust or a hip bridge. I wish the reverse hyper with, were more popular. Yes, yes, but, that would be yeah, amazing. Yeah, I understand. But I could do a hip bridge or hip thrust with almost anybody. That was actually one of my most effective uh, back strengthening, lower back relieving So I feel exercises. that way about a hex bar deadlift. Okay. I, I feel like I don't think I've ever had somebody comes to you with back pain. You have them do a heck park deadlift. Well, no, you that you regress that first. You but I've never I've never had a client ever 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 who we we did not hex bar get to a point where we could hex bar. Deadlift. Sure, but let me put Always. it this way: you get an over forty person average, not like super extreme one one direction, and they're like, "Yeah, I got back pain. My low back kind of hurts or whatever." What's going to make their low back feel better right now and get stronger and reduce the risk of injury right now? Floor bridge or hip yeah, thrust bridging. over. 
a, a deadlift, which deadlifts are amazing for that. It just takes time yeah, but to you're get not, there. Yeah, but now you're isolating to a, a very small percentage of just everybody who's over 40. So to, to say that these are the three general lifts that you like, that you... It's not perfect. There's, there's going to be... but, I, but yeah. I know. I mean, it creates a good discussion, by yeah, the way. I'm totally. not, I mean, yeah, no, that's why, yeah. It's a good discussion. I mean, what, what's interesting about this discussion is, one, everybody agrees on the sled. So yes. that just, to me, that's the big standout. Like, that's yes. how powerful that is for a 40 plus yeah that you you can build strength with that Hit you can regress that slide. come on man it's it's you get you get the unilateral type yes. of work there you get speed out of there i mean to, foot the, ankle everything like, that's yeah. a yeah. that's a that's a that's a king in there for sure and and for all the reasons too if you're dealing with potential i i mean i just i like the hex bar deadlift and i like a, a bulgarian or a lunge in there that's i just would prefer those over i think over the, the the bar the barbell box so box. i'm so here's what i'm here's the three general things that i put in there <laughs> and there's other exercises that can fall in this category there's a squat so that, that would be the box squat could be a barbell squat so there's a mm -hmm. squat there's a squat there's a split stance something, something with with a full extension, which includes the ankle and the foot. Addressing stability and strength. Yes. And that's all lower body too, because there's no otherwise there's no other <laughs> foot or calf or ankle, anything in there, right? So that's number two. And then there's some kind of a hip extension. Yeah, hip hinging, hip or extending. hip hinging, yeah. right? So what else could go in there? Well, it could be a barbell squat, a box squat, could be a front squat. Those all go in that same category. It could be a lunge, Bulgarian split stance, or the or, or, or it driving the sled. Just be like a, a jump in place. Right, or that, right? Or you could go, and then with the hip extension, it could be deadlift, hex bar deadlift. It could be, uh, it could be Romanian deadlift. Good it mornings. could be good morning, or it could be a hip thrust. I chose the ones with the best uh, risk versus reward ratio that I could think of. I that, can that's see that's that. what I did. So pick a squat movement that has a better risk versus reward than a box squat. By the way, what you just did right now is probably yep. the, the best way to explain to the people that are probably their heads are spinning right now with yeah. this, this conversation is. The, I saved the, it for the, the thing, end. I wanted the, everybody to disagree with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully they, hey, hopefully they got this Boom. far. Or else <laughs> the they already guarantee guarantee squat, eighty percent you know. already commented on this mm -hmm. shit mm -hmm. already on fire. Yeah. But what you said right now is that's the real trainer. Yes. The real trainer goes, yes. here's the three attributes exactly. that are extremely important to me that I want to get with this client, mm -hmm. this elderly this, client or north yeah. of forty person. That's what I want to get. Now, where I start or what I do has completely to do with the individual. This yes. was the same deductive process I had to go through with like the young athletes. Yeah. Like, and like, okay, I want to establish this, but like, this is a little bit too high skill. This is a little bit too high risk. This is a little too much, yep. you know, education that I have to implement. So like, how do I distill this down to like the crux of like what to focus on? Yeah. With box squats, you know, look, MAPS Anabolic, I wrote that a long time ago. Okay. I, if you look at the original maps anabolic, there's a set of box squats in there before barbell squats. Why did I put box squats? Oh in there? yeah, to not, learn you know, it. Because with my clients, I saw almost, if not the same, benefits with box squats that I saw with barbell squats with all my clients, and I could get everybody to box squat. I could not get everybody to barbell squat. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, one of the most, the the, the one of the yeah, greatest the regressions uh, as far as like that I used with clients that I want is the basic sit down on a bench and get up, which mm -hmm. is the same exactly. thing. It's just same, not a barbell. Exactly. Same premise. I mean, that is the, that is the most obese deconditioned client. Exactly. Okay. So I, you hold my hand. I you I sit you down on a bench and you get back yep. up yep. and we start to train that pattern. So you can at least, and then I can cue it. Oh no, slide your hips back more. Let your, like, I can start to yeah, cue that. And then your biggest deterrent a lot of times is depth because it's, totally. it's unfamiliarity. It's, it's, you know, they'll, they'll feel like their body's kind of resisting them going a bit lower. So, you know, to be able to have them sit all the way down, that helps. There's also this, when you, when you lower and change directions for a split second, the weight that is, that is, that you're lowering with becomes heavier because of the change in momentum. Mm -hmm. So if you go down with 100 pounds on your back, when you go to change directions, it becomes more like 120 pounds. That change in direction at the bottom is a higher risk of injury. A box eliminates that because you lower down controlled, you sit, there's no change of direction, you brace, you get your perfect form, and then you come back up. Whereas you don't have time to do that when you change directions at the bottom of a squat. So mm -hmm. really the consideration was max benefit, minimum risk with with all three options you know what this this conversation for me with this highlights more than anything else is why uh instagram and tiktok trainers are stupid yeah <laughs> because this is a classic example of how you could take they're just the clickbait of the world yeah, yeah you yeah. could take any of those exercises and make a viral video right to say something controversial and then or or try and take one of those ex extract it and then get a, a study to support why your argument yep. is true and the truth is 
training individuals is so much more nuanced than always. that. Yep, it's always. So much, like everything that we just argued about, like there has been a client, there's been 10 clients that I have had to use your scenario, your scenario. my. And, and so exactly. the truth is a really good trainer understands the desired outcome is that we got to get something for their foot, ankle. I got to get some sort of unilateral work. I want something somewhat explosive. I want to I want to also weigh in a risk in there. I want to weigh in reward there. What is, what's a regression to that? How am I going to progress this? Like all that stuff. This is like real good training and coaching is the ability to do that, and none of that fits in Instagram or TikTok. Never, because they're like you're. This talking- is why we started a podcast because it's the it's long form communication. I got to be able yeah. to talk about this for a while. I can't do this in you know thirty characters or however many characters on Twitter or a, a, a short yeah. stupid video. I can't wait till Andrew clips this. Yeah, it's I know be- <laughs> it's gonna be so awesome. You know who I hope? Can we make Can we make bets on like yeah. how many? We're gonna get the most hate on TikTok. I, that's it's be I, this guy. Can I? Yeah, hey, yeah. listen. I good. Come at me. <laughs> I, you know who I hope, who I hope that dumb idiot TikTok trainer. I don't even know his name. He's such a moron. The guy with the dark glasses. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, actually for hypertrophy, the leg press and the, the hack squat slide. <laughs> and 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 the way muscle fibers, but shut up, bro. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, there are, there are some common things that you notice that we did all agree on. Notice, uh, we didn't say any machine stuff. No. Uh-uh. Nothing was machine. No. Okay. Even, even considering the most deconditioned person, yeah. right? So that we all agreed on. And when the sled, right? Yeah. That to me, those, uh, that is kind of the cool takeaway from this too, yeah. right? One, we didn't say fucking uh, any sort of leg press or no. leg extension or any sort of a machine. That would be, I think, a stupid, that's a bad trainer going that direction. And all of us agreed that the sled is such a great universal tool who, to start who almost anyone. can't anywhere. use a sled and who can't benefit from a sled. It's yeah. almost nobody. Yeah. Yeah. If you can walk, you can do sled. Anybody and everybody. You're an athlete, high performing athlete, sled. Yeah. You're a total beginner, deconditioned, sled. And Your body makes you stronger. Sled. It's this thing. It's just like, you know, you get fatigued, you just let go. Oh. It's as simple as that. I know. I know. Yeah. I just discovered uh, one of my favorite things to do, and I can't believe this is still happening. I've been working at it for so long, and it just happened to me again. I just discovered an old exercise that I'm familiar with and I've known about and what? I've seen a million times and I started using it and I just discovered how valuable it is. And it's the dumbest, silliest, stupidest. It's an exercise you've seen a thousand times. It's a freaking dumbbell side bend. Oh, it's yeah. A dumbbell. Oh, we were arguing about that. Never. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But well, I've been are- doing it too, especially with like a barbell. Yes. For me, uh, it's been money. So, so obviously, I love deadlifting, right? It's it's my but favorite I have exercise. I barbell. I feel more manly. Yeah. That's- <laughs> I'm, not, I'm a little teapot. Yeah. Like, that's, that's all I can think of. Yeah. I'm sorry. But that's Justin, what I thought of. Justin. Yeah. So, I I, uh, I love deadlifting. It's my favorite exercise. One of my favorite exercises. I'm really good at it. It's probably the thing I'm the best at. Uh, in terms of uh, lifts. Um, and every once in a while, I got to be careful. If I start to get too heavy, I'll start to notice some stiffness in my back and okay, things will start to bother me and I'll do mobility, whatever. And uh, I don't know why I never thought of this. Like ob- what it, where it's coming from is lateral stability or instability, I should say. And it's it's always a, Q, it's a QL issue for me. Okay, QL is a muscle deep in the, yep. in the core and it, it, it does some lateral strength and stability of the spine. And a, a dumbbell side bend where you really here through the lumbar extend laterally and then contract laterally. So people think it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, oblique exercise. Well, not really. It's more, it's a QL exercise, but if you really do it right, you'll feel the QL extend and stretch, and then you'll feel it contract. Okay. I have never done an exercise that got, that made my back, the, the whatever little bit of pain I have not only go away, but my back stability feels like, it feels like I did 10 weeks of, of mobility work mm. from that exercise alone, doing it twice, <clears throat> yeah. doing it twice, literally do it, go outside, test it, and then see how you feel. I know you, you've been messing well, with Well, I it. had, yeah. And I think we're similar in, in how we got injured, you yes. know, like, cause of that shift of weight. And so if you're not accounting for that ever, that lateral stability, uh, it's going to come back to kind of bite you. So to, to be able to train, strengthen it and get it to respond adequately, like that's a good exercise for that. That's where I go from that. And then I also like consider any rotational forces. Yes. And so that's where the uh, windmill for me, it kind of covers both of those. Absolutely. So what I'm doing right now is I I've done it like two or three times only only during my deadlift workouts at the end. The day after, I feel zero uh, SI joint pain. I feel zero of the stuff I used to feel before. And I'm like, hmm, let's see. I'm going to keep make sure my form is good, but let's see how strong I can get. Because I'm going to get really strong at that silly exercise. And I feel like if I get really strong at that, I'm going to be bulletproof. 
uh, with deadlifts. And yeah. that's how it feels. Well, so you, you got to do that for your 700 lift. Let me add oh, to your I'm arsenal to. then, because I, I don't think I've ever seen you do this. And I was doing this yesterday. So, and and this is, it's in the, it's in the vein of like you supporting yourself laterally when you're doing deadlifting. That's exactly why I was doing it. Cause I've been feeling this. I like, I've been wanting to go heavier on my deadlifts and I'm like, every time I do, I'm feeling this. I'm like, okay, I'm neglecting this shit. The assisted McGill planes is fucking amazing mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all i did was literally my body weight open my hips yeah let them come down open yeah. my hips mm -hmm. let them come down mm -hmm. open my and 10 of those controlled on each side for like two or three Isn't sets that great when you do the movement oh. that's the solution you know right away right oh and then you could i could just feel how stable my hips felt before i went into the deadlift it's just i just never i just neglect it i never do it and it's such a great great movement i love it all right, today's giveaway is the RGB bundle. That's three workout programs, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video uh, in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, there's only one day left for the June special. MAPS Cardio, 50% off. The Shredded Summer Bundle, 50% off. And the Bikini Bundle, 50% off. Again, only one day left. So if you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So speaking of twisting, the media. Oh, Ooh. let's talk about the media real quick. I that just took a turn. Yeah, I know. Dude, the media is a propaganda bullshit machine. It's so bad, it's not even funny. Yeah. Do you guys want to hear the latest on how they twist how they're twisting things? Hmm. Okay. Who's so who's still watching TV and just like, yeah, yeah, that's it is, probably true. It is literally the loudspeaker for uh, special interest. That's all it is. Okay. Yeah. That's it. That's it. They don't. They don't report anything other than what their goal is to influence you. And, I'm, and now I am one hundred percent convinced of this. One hundred percent. I used to kind of. Uh, this might be what it's going on. Now I'm like for sure. So Bud Light, right? Sales crashing, <laughs> tanking. Yeah. They're now. Uh, they're no longer the top selling. Uh, you know, beer in America. They're just. They're just getting crushed. Articles come out. <clears throat> uh, Bud Light's sales. Uh, drops follows a tr a recent trend in all domestic beers. Basically, the article saying, "Oh, the, you know, the well, sales are dropping." Domestic beers. The <laughs> sales are dropping because people are just buying less wow. domestic beer. And I'm seeing several articles like that. Really? Yes. Target <clears throat> Target got hammered right with the whole what they were doing with the the their pride displays and some of the stuff that you know for kids or whatever. Yeah. Hammered. Yeah. Bomb threats were called in to Target. Ready for this? by LGBT activists who were like, you guys caved in and you guys caved in the mob, okay? The Good report Lord. the report, basically makes it look like they were coming from conservatives. White supremacists. Yes. <laughs> yes. They also, it gets worse. They oh, also on social media were posting uh, pictures and images of Target stores rampage. Oh, Detroit. I heard, I saw this. But it was from, oh, but that, that was, was from the George BLM. Floyd. The BLM George Floyd, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh my God. I heard they got called out on that one though. They did. Yeah, yeah I heard they got called this out. This is wild. Like, Wait a second. These are the videos from the BLM riots. Dude, <laughs> how wild is this? Yeah. It's so crazy. I mean, uh, it's it's so bad. Like, if they like so you, obvious. if they like you, they'll protect the hell out of you. If they don't like you, now the, oh boy, the, it's the, like the on, The scary, man. the unfortunate part about this <laughs> is even though there's enough people that see it and we're talking about it, and obviously you're not the only person that's highlighting it. It's still uh, there's still a majority that fall for correct. It, you know, it's crazy. I mean, I was actually surprised. This I mean, this is kind of off subject, but uh, somewhat along the lines, just of uh, how much podcasting growth has slowed down. It really has, and I was kind of scratching my head, like what that mm. is. And, and the more I thought about, it, I was like, you know, if you listen to podcasts, you probably fall in the category of reader. Like whether you listen to audio books or you read books or like you're growth minded. Yes, yeah, growth minded. Yeah. Mo I mean, unless you're like just purely a, a murder mystery yeah, you podcaster, input. you're normally like that's a kind of a just pure entertainment. Well, they've done studies on on uh, regular podcast listeners. They tend to be uh, they tend to be like that. Yeah, they, more educated, more affluent. And yeah, stuff like more, that. yeah, more growth oriented. Yeah, so I think that we're just we're reaching the the peak of that as far as like we've got <laughs> there's only so many there's people. only so many people like that. i'm serious most people would rather uh, plug into a netflix series and binge watch for a, a week straight and just be mindlessly entertained mm -hmm. yeah. so and th that same it, person it's hard for me to believe that same person is also easily manipulated by the media still yeah. So I, I just think that as much as we sit here and talk, we're, we're preaching the choir. Everybody who's listening to this podcast, 
Like I, I know the that's, numbers were so substantially higher than uh, you know legacy media and like old um, ways of consuming news. Like to, to the point where it, they were they're destroying and, and like crushing these old established media companies. And so for me to like where did where is, was that reported? Was that from actually uh, like again? I'm, I would question those numbers because like I don't know how accurate. I would think that. Okay, is. so here's more. I'm gonna okay, wait, wait. So let, well, let me address what he's saying okay. though first. So you're, what are you suggesting? Are you suggesting that you don't think that maybe it's accurate that the legacy media is dying as much as it is? No. Or that no, it that is that dying. Podcasting is dying. Oh, 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 oh. Unless it's getting ratcheted or numbers. Well, I mean, one of the easiest ways they measure that is by advertising dollars. Mm -hmm. If you look up Doug, look up uh, legacy media or, or uh, television uh, advertising versus podcast advertising, and it's fucking not even in the same universe. Right, but how? Right, what, but what, like, what's if, the trend? Though? Yeah, and also, and, well, to, the trend, the trend from was the moving. Like the trend was it. moving in podcasting over the last five years, but that has seemed to take a halt. Okay, but hold on, is this is the growth slowing or is it negative? There's a difference. Well, it's not negative. Okay, so yeah. it's still growing. Just the growth is slowing. It was really. I think. I think it was like a plateau this last yeah. year. Maybe okay. Doug can can fact check me. But then, but then again, we also are, also is all uh, advertising starting to plateau because we're we're the, you know the yeah, economy. Yeah, there's a lot of advertising. I mean, listen the, the, again. The easiest way to measure this is through advertising dollars, where the money is being spent by big companies. And if it's seventy billion. To a few hundred million, it's not even in the same universe. No, no, no. I don't know. And dude. if it's slowing, and it, when it's when it's that lopsided, and if the theory is like, oh, we're going to move, everybody's going to start moving in this direction. Well, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be slowing down. It should be accelerating. Yeah, still. but is the slowdown across the board? In other words, are we seeing a slowdown because advertisers are just paying less, advertising less? People mm. are getting laid off. Like for example, Silicon Valley. I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but the the tech layoffs. The, the, the amount of money people are making is taking a massive hit in places like here in Silicon mm -hmm. Valley. So it could just be the overall trend is going down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, that's the thing that we would need to parse out. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, just I think question, I, again, like, I, I don't know. I guess I just I, I try to see, like, um, because of most people I talk to now, it's been an, an introduction to podcasts, like, like over the past month or two, like there's, I've seen a lot more people like just all of a sudden, like finding their way to it. So I don't know. I just find it's, it's kind of difficult for me to see where else they would go uh, in, in terms of like their, well, I just, I just, I just really think that it's a, it's a very unique person that listens to, I mean, for the most part, I mean, I know that we've tried to blend somewhat of entertainment with education, but for the most part, we're education. Like yeah. if you listen to us, very few people listen. They're just like, oh, these guys are just so cool and funny. I just like to listen to them talk yeah. about, that's not why most people, most people are cool. getting value from the show because we're teaching indirectly, right? Mm -hmm. We're teaching them about health and fitness and being better dads and all that shit like right. that, right? So you have to be a type of person that wants to do that. And that's not a majority. And have the time to sit down and actually. And that, and, yeah, right. And then in addition to that, you can carve out five days a week, an hour and a half. Yeah. Like that's a very small percentage of people that that actually are doing that. And it's, so, a, it's a long form of of, uh, of media. And to me, it's the same people that listen to, to audiobooks. Yeah. How many people do you guys know that actually listen to audiobooks to, to learn and grow and to be better and stuff like that? It's just not no, a lot. I, I hear that. I think mm. what Justin's saying is if you look at legacy media versus new media, new media includes all the other crap too, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, you know, all that stuff, plus podcasting, people are moving. They are moving over. Legacy yeah, media yeah. is dying. Uh, okay, so uh, yes, I agree that like more and more people, there's plenty of stats to show that more and more people get their news from TikTok and, and Twitter than they, they did just five years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's not not true. But I also think there was this belief, and we believed also that like, oh, you know, television, media, all that stuff is going to completely die. I think it's just shifting. I think we're I think we're moving to the the Netflix and we're moving to streaming services and stuff like that, which indirectly it will be getting hit with advertising too. Yeah, that's that's, all, look, that's coming. By look, the way, the if you guys don't think, by the way, if you don't think that streaming services will not look like television soon, it will. They'll have options like they that. will. Yeah. They'll have free they options. Yeah. That's what will happen. It'll they will eventually once they they, yeah, they garner enough that. attention. Yeah, it'll be you could do free with. That's commercials. right, just like with Spotify. Like so, all yeah. these streaming services aren't aren't that different than legacy media. No, no, it's just no. new companies like yeah. Spotify is now kicking the ass of whatever name your favorite channel, the and is Netflix is now kicking the other channels' ass. But they're gonna play the same fucking game. They are, but here's the difference. The difference is now you can get information 
information that isn't necessarily going through the same gatekeepers. So, like, you could put out a fake news article. I mean, but Sal, or a fake news report. Sal, you're, you're, okay, so they're different gatekeepers, and they and, and so they haven't been. No, no, no. They you, haven't been bought yet. No, no. Hear me out. <laughs> not true. No, hear me out. It's, you, it's you, have that much, be, you have that much faith in Netflix and not HBO them. Max. No, and, not and, necessarily them. But let me give you an example. You could do a fake news report uh, through the old gatekeepers. Then there could be people with their cell phones going, that's not what's happening. And they, boom, post it to social media. Now you can see alternatives. By the way, I'm 100%, the media hasn't become more dishonest. What's happened is we've become more aware of oh, their yeah. dishonesty. It's always been bullshit. Most of social oh, I think media it's has both. been, been I think it's both. That. It's always been yeah, bullshit. No, no, no. You know, there's, it's both. Here's why it's both. Name because one. Let me here's, ask a, here's a reason why I'm going to say it's both. It's it, it's always been dishonest. I'm not, not saying that. But it's gotten increasingly more because more and more of it's driven by clicks, and, they, and they've learned that. They've learned, oh, wow, the more extreme we go. That was we, we weren't aware of that. The marketing has evolved. It's like marketing has always evolved. And we've learned over time, like, oh, when we say crazy outlandish bullshit, it gets way more views, I, shares, and I clicks. Think, I think so. It's it's a combination of what you're I saying. I don't think it's more. It's not. Uh, it's not. Was it's not as dishonest. Like you can't tell me in the '50s it was more dishonest than what it is uh, today. Or the same. Look, uh, no way. Okay, I'll tell you what. What was the what was the news report that I'm finally not, tipped the tipped the scales that got us to go to Vietnam? I'm not saying that it wasn't dishonest, Sal. I'm not saying there wasn't dishonest. Hold on a second. You're, Hold on a second. Everything is dishonest now. Yeah. What are you? There's like, no, 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 no. There's a difference. There's a difference now. Okay. Why don't we weigh in with the only person that was around here in the fifties? Yeah. <laughs> 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 he was part of that that greaser gang. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Doug was like 25 <laughs> around that time, right? <laughs> so he's all wait 1850s. Yeah. Listen, listen, yeah. listen for yeah. that. Doug, yeah. does, Doug does have more, more no, 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 life no, no, no. experience Cummies. in this, in Hold this argument. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay. When the Gulf of Tonkin didn't happen, but they reported that it did, and that's what drove us into Vietnam, very few people questioned it. Yeah. There was no counter information. Sal, you're it not, was all bullshit. You're, okay, Weapons of mass destruction. Okay, Sal, you can name a, a handful find. of you can yeah. name a handful of things. Okay, you can name a handful of things that you're 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 pointing out right now. I can name a handful of things this week that the media only because says, you're more aware. Yeah. Only because you're more aware. No, it's 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 a combination of both. We are more yeah, aware and we've gotten created. worse. I don't think so. Yes, we have. Doug, can you, can you, can uh, you chime in here? You know, you're asking me a question that I can't really answer simply because I've been going down a rabbit hole over here about ad revenues. So <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, here's the thing. You send me off on these, these cases. He's like, remember when you told me to <laughs> look this up? Yeah, I've been over here trying to figure this out. We you should know? tell you it to Andrew because Andrew can't answer this one because he's, he's only a, he's a young yes. buck. He so can't. you want to ask me the question now the question okay. is this the, the, here's the debate is media more dishonest today or are we just more aware just of more how dishonest aware of they've it. been because yeah. they've been dishonest like this for a long time yeah i think they've been dishonest for a very long time okay but however that's well you can however frame, though. you just frame that <laughs> argument for you to win that that what I, my argument is i'm not arguing it wasn't dishonest before it's more dishonest today than it was no, in the 50s. i think we're just more aware well and i don't think the they have no that's so the I, i'll agree with adam in this point Thank i think they don't. i think they uh are they have to be more dishonest today? Yes, to get clicks and to get attention, right? And to counter, yeah. yes. So uh, thank you. They so they that's they've the had argument, to ramp up Sal. their dishonesty in order to compete. Yes, so let's back that, up. And that's because marketing has evolved over time. They've learned okay. that you got to back do that. in the old days. They would say anything, everybody would believe. That's it. right. Well, yes, and so they can just lie. Oh, that's one right. time I'm going to lie. Were trying we're to buy, that's they, right. they were trying to buy in the swing voters a lot more back in the day, okay. right? So now everybody's so split, they can directly target market. I'm, I'm going to use an example that we're all that all but, but of it's us always been dishonest. Arguments always. No, it's not. Argument's over, no, bro. Not. You just need to submit. You it lost. Has, listen, ever since the creation, <laughs> ever since the creation of the CIA and the Cold War, this was a big deal. This is yep. done. We know this. Look, I'm going to give you an example we can all remember. Sal. Everybody remembers. Hold on. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> Everybody can remember 9-11, September 11th. Why was it so controversial? Because we had people recording it. People saw it. If that was... In the 1950s, nobody recorded it. Nobody would have questioned it. Yeah. We question things. You just things. believe authority We now question things more. We have more counter information. So for every piece of bullshit, we have people like that, like so, that video so, of Target. So, so do you think, so the, along your, your lines, yeah. do you think that marketing hasn't evolved and changed since the 50s? Oh, yeah. Okay, I, yeah. We get smarter, we get better in everything that we do. One of the things that we've learned over the last 50 years is how valuable and how much by saying crazy outlandish shit gets us more attention. That has evolved and changed. 
It has gotten worse. Yeah, it yeah. has not stayed the same, and we're just more aware of it today. That's not, that plays a role, Sal. But it is it is definitely worse. So they were today. more honest before, is what you're saying. Yeah, more than they are today. That doesn't mean they weren't dishonest, and there wasn't lots of dishonesty. I'm not saying that. I agree with that. But it is way more rampant today. Yeah. You can you can go on right now, and you could see like ten different arguments on something that's all outlandish in every direction. No, I Come think on. It was a different form of it, right? Yeah. People like to be back then. People like to be lulled into like the state of comfort. They to Doug's point, they were easily they agreed. There was less, so they didn't require more lying, more deceit. It requires, because of your point of it becoming more aware, yeah, but, now it requires more layers of lying and more layers but of deceit. That's not because they're, that's not because uh, of what you're saying. That's because there's now counter information that is making it harder. We're more aware. We're far more aware of the bullshit. Well, that's mm. all it is. We were at our eyes closed. I, no one's disagreeing that we're more aware. Yeah. Okay. That's no one disagrees with that. I 100% agree with that. And so that's obvious, but I do think it is worse today than it well, was then. I think it's because we are aware that they're ramping up the lies. That's 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 okay. That's I think you're both right. <laughs> okay. okay. So look at Doug trying to be friends with everybody. <laughs> I'm Switzerland here. Fuck, okay. Switzerland. This is a Switzerland. circular Switzerland. conversation. Listen, Doug, we're all going to stare at you and no one's going to say a word until you pick a side. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> pick a side. Stay with it. Pick a side. This is a typical debate. Now uh, you think about like history, right? Yeah. It, it's written by the victors. Yeah. His story, right? Mm. Uh, so oh, wow. you, advertising. You and in media what about is owned by corporations mm -hmm. and their corporations have a vested interest in having the story that they want put out there to be put out there. Yeah, look, and so I think traditionally it's always been happened over time with the invention of handheld cameras, with the invention of uh, now, especially smartphones is people become more aware and aware. Nobody's harder, arguing harder. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. So Vietnam Dinosaurs is a good, aren't real, Vietnam is a good example that. because Vietnam was the first war Vietnam was the first war where you had people in the field recording and right away, and we saw what was going on, the horrors. We didn't see that in World War II or the wars. People were like, what the hell is going on? This is absolutely insane. Kennedy got assassinated. We had that recorded. That recording caused a lot of controversy. Ano had it not been recorded, people would have just- you know, Another way this argument falls flat on its face is that- 50 years ago, there was like three sources of news. That's what I'm saying. People <laughs> so, just were not so aware. There, so it was, there was, you didn't need to lie as much. Where you, like, you have to lie more to get attention. So well, you know just crazy? a competitive uh, argument alone makes your argument yeah. fall You, you bring up two very controversial things that yeah. are still debated today in terms of like 9-11 and JFK, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's been recent information and developments for both of those that we just can't even talk about because people are so entrenched in whatever they were told, yeah. you know, decades ago. Yeah. And so you can't even bring that up as like, you know, developing Listen, information. Like people won't fucking receive Listen, it. Look this up. Look, this is real. I'm not making this up. Go everybody right now, go operation Northwoods. Look that up. This was signed by the joint chiefs of staff. This literally it almost happened. You know what it was? It was a, it, this was a, this was literally put for in front of, of JFK. The plan was to fake a terrorist attack in Miami and blame the Cubans to, to gain support for an invasion of Cuba. Yeah. He's, he said, no, we're not doing that. A fake terrorist attack. Yep. This was literally signed by the joint chiefs of staff. Yeah. So this is a real thing. This is declassified. And you're thinking like, what? They would never do that yeah. again, would they? They'd yeah. never like play this out again. Yeah. They would never. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, dude. Yeah. How naive. I know. All right. Let's get out of here because this is getting a little too too heated. I'm yeah. going to say something nice about Justin and not because he agrees. Not necessarily <laughs> because he agrees with me. <laughs> not because he picked my side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, we need another partner, by the way. Yeah. We need a we need, we need an odd number. Split. We need, we need an Andrew, odd pick number. a side. God damn it! Yeah. No, we're not gonna do that. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. gonna say Justin looks really good because uh, is it because you're super fit or is it because of the shirt? What's going on? I mean, I was hoping it was the fit part, but <laughs> also the fit itself. You've been, you've been rocking more of the State and Liberty shirts. He I is. see. I have like white, black, uh, navy blue now. Like it's just like it. It's the shirt that you, even you know when you find something that just it. Fits you yeah. in like a glove. Yeah. Like, so that's. Well, what where they I'm do at. is it's got wide shoulders and a tapered waist. Yeah. Now you well, have helps. both. I don't, yeah. I actually don't have any state livery t shirts. Love them. So oh, I've got their favorite, <laughs> like suit collection like crazy, Love but I, I do not have their t shirts. They're all, they're all tailored or see, they feel like they're tailored for athletes because all, because even t shirts, you ever buy a t shirt? Tight on your arms, but it's all big on your waist. Yeah. And then you have this like, does like, it dressy feel blouse, like, more? Or less dressy than Viore's t-shirts, or the same? Would you? Where would you put it in this? Oh, like, how would you uh, like? 
So Vior, Vior, I feel like Viori like has a little more breathability. It's like it. So this is like it's it's compressed, right? So mm -hmm. it more it actually, fitted. It's more fitted, and so it's like mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to work out in it as much because okay. I'll get like sweaty. And, okay, you know. so it's let it's more like you could you would dress that up before you address the Viori stuff. Yeah, up. Viori more athleisure wear, more yeah. athletic yeah, well, feel. Yeah. Exactly. When I'm they, wearing my uh, you know Viori pants, because you could actually take that shirt. So what I did with mine was I took that T-shirt, something similar, and put the sport coat in the slack on it and it looked like i was wearing yeah i can well i mean he's wearing it with like that so it dresses that up so yeah. that so it, it's uh that's how you would decide that with like okay if i was gonna go work out you'd probably be rocking viore, oh, viore yeah. but if you're like i'm gonna dress like did you guys see casual that? It's, nice it's comfortable but it is like it, it's definitely something a, okay. little, a little more nice did yeah, you guys see some. the the dm we got from uh i think it was a, a bride or a bride to be she's like i all of our my groom and all the groomsmen need to get suits they're all they all work out. Oh. Yeah, so they went through State Liberty. Oh, they did. Uh -huh. uh, oh, wow. Yeah. I I'm, I'm actually we've been missing each other. I'm supposed to connect with the guys. Uh I mean, supposedly it's been doing really well. So another one of those brands where I wasn't sure like, you know, how big of the audience would would go that mm -hmm. way, but I mean, it makes sense. Like it's there's just not a lot of suit companies that tailor to athletic fit men and mm -hmm. I, they did such a great job and I I mean, I love their stuff, but oh, I haven't yeah. got a shirt, so I'll have to get some yeah. I'll have to get some t-shirts. Oh, so, yeah, you'd love it, dude. Did you guys hear that uh, one of our wrestling heroes from when we were kids in the 80s passed away? Who? Which Iron one? Sheik. Oh, oh Iron really? Iron Sheik oh, passed man. away, dude. Yeah. Dude, How old is he? Let's look dude, him up. He used to rock those like uh, Persian meals and uh, like swing those around and stuff Oh, too, yeah. Right? Didn't he? So he used to get have the big clubs. Yeah, the big clubs. Yeah, he would go like when he'd do his interviews and stuff. He would Did have, he really? Yeah. yeah. And I don't know what they were when I was I didn't know. They, that's interesting. I I'll, bet if you type in his name and look up images, you'll see him getting interviewed by, you know, the-, the Why Doug's looking at that, please tell me you saw the, the little boy who got off the bus no. from school yeah. and did the Stone Cold Steve He's Austin so thing. Did you guys see his that? last day of school. So Andrew thinks it's the same kid who did the Hulk Hogan impression. Now you remember that video, yeah. right? Remember the kid yeah, who met be. Hulk Hogan at the supplement store and, oh, and, he, and that yeah. video went viral. Let me tell you something, Hulkster. The first time I met you, I was only three years old, but now I'm six years old. So now we gotta take it to a bigger level, man. Just like when you press that no good stinking kind over your head and send them right through the table in front of 93,000 Hulkamaniacs. So what are they gonna do when the power of the Hulkster and the Roaster and the dual 24 inch pythons run wild on you? Ah! <laughs> So Andrew thinks it's the same kid. Andrew, you got to dig and find out if it's the same kid because that kid is like talented as hell. There's the Iron Sheik. You know, I met him uh, back in. Uh, I thought he was leaner. I didn't realize he was that thick. He was a big boy. He's he was. Thick. He's a real wrestler, by yeah, the way. He's a big guy. He I was believe... 81 when he passed. Huh? He was 81. Oh, that's old for a pro wrestler. Yeah. Pro wrestlers don't typically live very long. So I met him a long time ago, um, and uh, he was. You could tell he had some injuries and stuff, but he was an actual wrestler. I think if you look up his history. He was a, weren't, a, a weren't high most, level. Olympic. Weren't most of those guys like most of those guys that were in the early, the early like wrestlers were like crossover guys, Some, right? That a lot were, of them were. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a lot of them were. Yeah, he so. was like a really good wrestler. He was. Yeah, there he is. There's a picture of him. So was he Olympic? There, Doug, this, the one underneath that picture that you're on right there. Oh yeah, is that Olympic? Let oh, me yeah, double check. Is that him? Yeah. yeah. So, bro, he looks so different without the mustache and stuff. Yeah. Did he now? Did he? Re who did he wrestle for? Iran. Uh, Iran, yes. Okay. By the way, I don't know if you guys know this. Iran has a really uh, long uh, pedigree of wrestling. Like oh, one yeah? of the best, yes, I one of the best that. countries in the world for uh, for that style of wrestling, Olympic wrestling. You really know, good. speaking of him dying and, and you saying eighty one, he just reminded me of the the John Deloney talk because I, I finally watched it with Katrina the other night. Um, man, he did the thing where you. I've never done this. I don't think I would do this. I don't like this. I, I don't know if any of you guys would do this. Where he put how many weeks. He's lived in his life. I know. And then how many he's supposed to. Have you seen? Have it really you, puts in perspective. Yeah, I, that's why I didn't like it. I, <laughs> I, I don't want to do that. Like he kind of dark. lived till 90, right? Or something like that. He, I think only 85, I think is what he put. I think yeah. he put 85. So it's like somewhere. a graph and each it's like little box tiny squares. that's colored in is a week that he's already lived. And then the white boxes are how many weeks he has you know, left if he lives till he's 85. 
and you could see like, holy shit, like my life is I'm it's closing in. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, we all obviously you know that if based yeah. we're all in our forties, so you kind of know that you're the at the, we're kind of at the halfway. And I know that's what the over the hill thing is supposed to all be, right? So we're we're I, I know that, but to visually mm-hmm. be thrown in my face like that, I don't know if I like. I think that's too much information. <laughs> me honestly. too. So you're uh, you're on you're on board. Oh with yeah, yeah, it's too much for would me. Would you would you guys it do makes that? Me feel sad, especially since my little. White squares <laughs> yeah. are skinnier. Yes, yeah, we, yeah, not that's not true. That. You're, I would put yours at like you're going to be the guy who is the 110 out yeah. of us. You're going like. to you're going to be at our funerals, Doug. Yeah, uh, there's a good chance. I don't of look it. forward to that day. Yeah. Every okay, we're eight years together. <laughs> you get now, the whole right? business, Doug. We eight going on nine. <laughs> it's all mine. <laughs> we're eight going on nine, right? Years together. Yeah, that, like the actual business. We were actually talking a year before almost, right? Yeah. So yeah. you know, we're going on like nine to in. Every year that goes by, we look sniff- significantly older and you look younger yeah. compared to us. <laughs> yeah. There was a time where you definitely look like the older guy of yeah. all of us. That time is gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I bet you now, we're, if we're we were to meet up. people who don't know who we are, like this is like they just met Mind Pump like yeah. last week, and we were all together and we made them guess our ages, you would not would be, be picked. As, you would not be yeah. picked as the oldest yeah. for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. For I think sure I'd not. win that one. <laughs> yeah. Only because you rock all your grays now. Oh, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The shit I go through. You see the, I posted the old video we did, the maps anywhere. I, I want to bring back, so there's a lot of old stuff that Doug old used to do. Old ads that we did before, I mean, we were And I actually it. think we yeah. we gave up on them too early because we just, we did them early when the when the podcast wasn't big enough to actually feel like the, res, the true mm-hmm. response. Because I tell you what, when I share some of that old stuff, <laughs> the pe- I get so much, like I want to... <laughs> Doug and I were going Dude. back to the old rabbit hole when he used to run the Instagram. Oh my yes. God. Oh okay. My God. Okay. Justin so I terrible. just remember when you're talking about ads. Like, do you remember the one we did for Chimera where I walk into you guys and you have like cocaine lines? Like we're doing lines doing of, of coffee. Like coffee, dude. I was like, that's so what inappropriate. Was, what was wrong with us? Oh, I loved dude. it though. Yeah. Andrew I, said that was the kid, by the way. It is Andrew. It's the same kid. Yeah. That's the wow. Kid. That's yeah. his whole thing. He's got his own page. Oh, he's got his own page. What a little badass! What's his What's his Instagram? It's called Ro underscore Nose underscore Wrestling. It's Ro R O W R O E R O W R O W underscore Nose. Like, there's like videos of him. Like, you wrote it R O like, though. League baseball team. This oh, is, what like, a little this badass! Is, this is his thing. He's Ro, such, he's okay, okay Ro. Say it again. So R O W underscore. Oh, it's right he's, there. he's a super. Oh, R O R O. What a little badass! Hey, did you guys? How big is his following? Yeah, what's he at? Oh, we're gonna blow him up right yeah. now. Let's blow this kid up because he's, he's talented. Yeah. Oh, have, yeah. wait, have, did you guys ever practice those pro wrestling moves in the '80s on your friends when you were little <laughs> and hurt somebody? Did you ever do that? I'm trying to think which ones, like the Stone Cold Stunner, and uh, what was the one that Triple H did, or is like the the like I don't know, he like it was on top of him, and then so so I did the camel the pedigree clutch. or I, something. I did Iron Sheik's camel clutch on my cousin and hurt him. <laughs> that's fun. That's a messed up ass move. <laughs> What with well, the Boston Crab? Isn't that like that one hurts? Yeah, that, yeah, that one's that terrible. That's a, that's a catch wrestling submission. Yeah, there Holy is. shit! Yeah, there it is right there. Uh, wow, he's dressed up as Hogan. That's great. Go ahead, play it. I want to see it. I want to see it. No, you got it. You got us half committed. In the flesh, baby. The ultimate male versus the ultimate meatball. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a little talented kid, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's great. That's, that's that awesome cool. stuff. That is funny. Yeah. Yeah. I also, Good I also call did. on that, Andrew. Andrew spotted that right away when I saw that. He's like, oh, that's like that's the whole Hogan kid. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that's that. That's awesome. Hey, uh, Adam, you're going to like this because you're you're such a, a business guy. Did you, have you seen these? Uh, what's going on right now on social media where they're showing how much money you could save if you move from New York to Florida? No. I don't know if it's like – I don't know if it's like a – like, I don't know if Ron DeSantis and their team are trying to do this or <laughs> so if I mean, you know, our, you know, our boy, uh, Brandon there. Carter did that. That was his big move, right? He, he went down and bought a place down in, in Miami and lives, you know, six months and one day out of the year down there. If you make, I'll use a big number and then I'll use a more realistic number. But if you make six, $650,000 and you go from New York to Florida, you'll pay, you'll save $200,000 in taxes. Oh my God. If you make $150,000 and you go from New York to Florida, You'll save fifty thousand dollars in taxes. That's how big of a difference it is. Wow. See, now that's the, the, if you have obviously <laughs> not insane. not everybody, but check this out. You know, like that has to be a okay. What is the? Um, it's still at fifty percent of people have come back to work, right? Yeah. So if you got a remote working job, at one point it makes sense to yep. buy a place over there and live 
you know, six months in one day out of the year. Especially if you're- Because it almost pays for the mortgage. Especially you can leave the winter months. You're snowing shit. Go to Miami. Beautiful down Well, there. I mean, figure- Okay, so you said 150. So pick something in the middle, 150, 650. So you're talking about someone saving $100,000. That's a, you know, a $8,000 a month mortgage that's negated by just having that yeah, there. Yeah, I know. That becomes like a no. How, I mean, at what and point- And that's not a long flight, right? New York to, to Florida. That's I mean, this really, is California. This is California, right? Same, very similar. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. at what point does California and New York get to the point where it's like, they got to figure out a way to change that or pe they're going to keep bleeding? Is New York bleeding as much as California's yeah, bleeding? Yeah. Residency? I mean, they were the two spots in, in the US, right? That had the, the highest economies, right? Bo both- uh, That's why they can get away with it, right? Well, yeah. I mean, currently, but you know, how long, I mean, in terms of it, Everybody exiting, leaving, and like companies leaving. Well, like, Florida exploded. Uh, they're, they're, they've attracted people. California bled. Um, those are the two comparable states, I would say. New York bled. So maybe Doug, no, Doug is better at this when it comes to tax stuff. If if I work for a company, say I worked for Google, okay, and I for, got a job here in, in the Silicon Valley, and I but now I'm a remote Google worker. Mm -hmm. I go, I want to move to Nevada or I want to move to Florida. And still work for Google, which is that that Google that where I got my employment is California. Am I still going to be held liable for California taxes? I mean, if you're an actual resident of those states, no, no, no. I, I say I move out of California. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you become a resident of those states, then Google would need to pay you as a resident of that state. Yeah. Okay. So that's where you. Get, that's what the because that was the one draw. I was thinking, okay, wait a second. What if you got employed though by someone? You're in New York. You got employed with a company that's based in New York. And then you're like, no, I don't want to. You know, you know what's interesting about taxes. Boy, isn't this perfect to have the shirt on today? We're talking about taxes. You know, what's, you know what's interesting. What does your about, shirt say? What is that? It's, it's, this is Ron Paul, bro. Taxation is theft. <laughs> oh, that's, if we didn't get kicked off, we will now. It was gangster glasses. I know. So you know what's interesting about taxes is I don't know what the number is. I can't remember, but there's a number of we've never collected more than this percentage of the total economy, regardless of the tax rate. Okay, so high taxes, lower taxes, whatever, you, you we, we've never been able to collect more than this percentage of the economy. Now, what does this mean? This means that you can raise taxes super high, but because you raise taxes, you crush innovation, you crush business, total taxes come back as the same or less. So 70, for example, 70% of 100 is less than 40% of 300, right? Or, or 600 or whatever because the economy gets crushed with the higher tax rate, you think you're going to collect more, you end up collecting the same amount or less because you reduce overall productivity. And I can't remember what the number is. There's an actual number. Well, I remember- they look at the history of, of the US, regardless of the tax rate, this is the most we could ever collect. Well, because, I remember when I, was, when I was in my 20s and I was on this like, every year from like 20 uh, up until I was almost 30, I made a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more every single year. And I remember getting to a place where once I once I crossed over like 80, 90 K a year, and then I was in the all the way up to like 120, 130, the difference of the money you take home is so for the amount of work I had to put in to make that extra to get to yeah, one, from 80 to 120 sense. didn't didn't justify yeah. what I was gonna actually taking home because as I as I moved up that moved up that ladder, I was also moving up the tax bracket. And so I was doing all this extra work just to stretch myself to that 120, 130 mark. And yet I felt like I was still making 80 or 90K a year. It was so frustrating. Some of the highest mm -hmm. tax revenues that we've ever collected. Which my point is that my finish with hot is that that made me not want to work more, Correct. do more. You Correct. know what I'm saying? It's like, why do more if I'm not going to- And it's not just that. Less, more taxes or more money to taxes means less money for companies and individuals to innovate and invest and grow. Okay. So it's not just you're less motivated. It's also, I got less capital- Right. To go out and can hire help I can't and to hire. great things. So some yeah. of the highest, you know, decades or years of tax revenue collection in America were not when we had the highest tax rates. It was when the economy was crushing. Mm -hmm. When the economy is crushing, even if we have a lower tax rate, we collect more because things are, are are crushing. So this is always the balancing that people have to understand when it comes to tax rates. It's like you can raise taxes. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to collect more money, though. Because if you crush business with this, you're going to collect less or the same right. because of the- The truth, it has nothing, it has very little to do effect. anything with our, our economy, GDP. None of that is to take into account. It's literally about growing government. It's yeah. always about, taxation is always about oh, creating yeah. more more, more government, bigger government. Yeah. That's the whole, the whole purpose yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If, they, if they ever try and sell you, that's them 
pissing down your back and telling you it's raining. Yeah, you know? with, with no accountability. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almost, almost Here you done. go. What does that say there? According though? to this, the federal government, this is in 2022, spent $6.3 trillion, and uh, tax dollars were $4.9 trillion. Yeah, so what's the rest? 78%. Uh, well, you know, you create other taxes called inflation by printing more money, yeah. uh, <laughs> more debt, you know, mm. that type of thing. So we're getting taxed Round one way or another. Ways. Yeah. Well, you know what the problem with this is? is that most people don't understand all of this. They definitely don't understand inflation. So how, and, and we have a, a, a democracy where we elect people. So you, now you're a politician and let's say you want to be honest and tell the truth. Be like, hey guys, listen, we can't pay for all this shit. Like Ross Perot. Yeah. We, we can't, remember we did that? <laughs> yeah. And you lost. Oh, we, we can't pay for all this stuff. So we're not going to give you all this free stuff. Then the next thing that comes up is we could totally pay for this stuff. We're going we're gonna to tax the other guy over there, not you. And it's all good. You get all this free stuff. Like you're not going to win. Mm -hmm. So it always goes down that that route. It just yeah. keeps growing. The, the 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 beast keeps on keeps on moving forward. Consuming. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. Crappy. I know. Anyway. We uh we have Organifi today. Did oh, I dude. See, did I see you pulling out uh, Pure again? I'm huh? using Pure again. I love it. It's the most. Uh, it's one yeah. of the best. Besides the green juice, Pure is one of the best feeling. Uh, products I have. You That's one good. of those I always just need a reminder and then I'm going to be right back on board with it. It just feels just, good. Yeah, I just feel good when I take it. We've got a meeting a with one. them coming up. I'm really curious to hear what it's about. Uh, we haven't actually talked to Drew in a while and they reached out and I think Katrina's scheduled for us for next week sometime. So I don't know, like something to do with doing, either they got something else coming out um, or they want they wanted to do more with our partnership. Remember somewhere. last time we talked with him? Remember he was wearing that? I don't remember that jacket. It was like a Michael Jackson or Sergeant Pepper. Bro, he's got some serious style. Yeah, he yeah, just it's, yeah. it's out there. He just, he remember is, that? Yeah, it was like yeah, a red yeah, with yeah, the yeah. Drew. I, I love Drew. Dude. Yeah. He's, he's a nice guy. He's a really yeah, he's nice guy. guy. He is. He's a he's a character. And uh, you know, it, to talked about his uh, brilliance and humility to scale something to the size that he did. I mean, uh, I don't know where Organifi's numbers are today. I know they're north of a hundred million dollar company, which is a pretty damn big company. And he had the wherewithal early on in that business to step aside and allow someone else to run it. It takes a lot knowing what we know and where we're at in this business. Like imagine you like relinquishing your roles as executives mm -hmm. and giving that the keys to somebody else when you're in the middle of building and scaling it. That takes a lot, man. Yeah. It does. That takes Especially a Especially when you built it. Your baby. Yeah. It takes yeah. a lot of trust. takes a lot of balls. takes a lot of imagine humility. If you, imagine if you did that right? Like Steve Jobs, right? Like say, imagine if you did that and then you saw Mind Pump go in the wrong direction. Oh, oh. panic. Dang Especially man. since, I, I, you know, it'd be fun. God, when we talked to him, remind me to bring this up because it would be interesting to hear from him that if it was, as soon as he stepped aside, was it like a rocket ship and just kept going? Or did they go through a little bit of a lull and transition yeah. of the changing of the guard and stuff like that? Because you're right. Like yep. I can't imagine bringing another executive in, stepping back our roles and, and saying, okay, the yeah. And, and even if it wasn't going wrong, just kind of really st being stagnant, yeah. you'd be like, oh my God, like I got to take it back. And then having trust and faith, like, okay, it's going to take time. Because that's your to, legacy. Yeah. You know? Oh. All right. So shout out. Uh, I wanted to shout out Jason Kalipa. Oh. Um, good friend of ours. He's a CrossFit God. Super nice guy. Uh, haven't talked to him in a while. He's Super a, he's nice a guy. guy. He's a great guy. J just a machine, physical machine. Uh, I think his Instagram is just at Jason Kalipa. Kalipa's K H A L I P A. There's a foundation that he always points to, right? What's it yeah, called? Yeah, it's a Jesse Reese Foundation. And this is for child cancer research? Is that uh, what it is? Correct. I believe okay. so. Yeah, so. You know, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this. I don't know if he knows either that I actually saw him. You remember Austin Begeeving? Yeah, dude. Okay, so you remember yeah. Austin, right? Yeah, we'll all the so, yeah, name that probably haven't heard in a long time. So he, uh, him and I worked together at the at um, Capital McKee 24. This is so my first one. So I'm 20, you know, barely 21 or two or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he eventually went over to work for Milpitas. And he. this was before CrossFit was like a thing, right? Before anybody knew what it really was. It was still underground coming from Santa Cruz yeah. and just like small pockets were doing it. And he called me up and he's like, hey, you got to come check this CrossFit thing out. They're, they they're, they have one of their, their little games that was happening in the parking lot. He's like, you got to watch this Jason Kalipa kid. And so he was only like 18 years old. So I actually watched him just like destroy all these men at like 18 years old in a parking lot at Milpitas. Wow. So if he hears this, like, you know, I, I don't think I've ever told him that. He's still a moose, man. Oh, he was a, he was a, he was a beast back then. I, had to, I don't know exactly how old he was, but I know he was younger than me. He's younger than us. And I was only, I was in my early 20s. So he had to been a baby. And I remember him just, he just destroyed everybody. Yeah. It wasn't even close. Super nice guy. Seed makes the world's best probiotic. So if you want to improve your gut health, reduce gut inflammation, improve cognitive function, have better skin, 
basically be healthier and you've read about the benefits of beneficial bacteria, go with Seed. They're the leaders in the industry. Go check them out. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 30% off your first month's order of Seed's daily symbiotic. All right, back to the show. First question is from Min10. Does strength really improve bone density? Hearing that it may not be true. No, there's nothing will improve bone density like building muscle and strength. Nothing. So remember, muscle anchors on bone. Yeah. The stimulus that causes and the stress that causes muscle to build and strengthen is the same that causes bone to strengthen. If you look at the studies on osteopenia, osteoporosis, uh, bone density, uh, the best intervention you can do that's non, you know, medical or pharmaceutical or whatever is just weight bearing exercise. It makes resistance sense. strengthens all of the tissues. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I, I don't know where they're hearing otherwise. Like what, where's this information coming from that says it's not strengthening bone doing resistance training. Yeah, We've known this for a yeah. long time. I long mean, remember time. you've brought up before too the, I mean, long bowman, how that can start to impact like the, even the shape of your, your, your bones and structure. So to think that resistance training is not having a positive impact on strengthening and supporting your bones would be ridiculous. Oh, it's incredible. I had a client, I've told this story a long time. You know, ago. I wonder if this is, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. I wonder if the, if this is, uh, the, um, movement that's happening right now to be like anti lifting weights and stuff like that. I, that I you, bet you've been talking about. Yeah, it's stupid. So I, I, um, I had a client, I haven't talked about this in a while. I have a client, I had a client years ago who had osteopenia was healthy. Could and, and it was just, she was slowly declining her bone density. And so her doctor was, they put her on, uh, I think it was Fosamax was the drug and some stuff to try and slow it down. It wasn't really, you know, it was still happening. She was really worried. She was a professor and she was teaching a class and she would share things with her class. Um, and one of her students used to work for me and says, Hey, I know this guy named Sal. He's a, he owns a studio. You should hire him as a trainer. Strength training is supposed to be good for it. So she did. She hired me and we did very basic strength training. She was in her, at the time, I want to say she was in her late fifties, early sixties. Um, and she wasn't a big woman. She was petite. So not, not strong, but we did traditional strength training and I'll never forget. It was, I want to say six months of strength. It was less than a year. She went and got her bone density test. Her doctor tested her again. Cause he didn't believe the results contacts me yeah. and says, uh, this, I've, I've never seen anything like this. What are you doing with this woman? I said, squatting, pressing, rowing, she, traditional strength. Didn't he training. end up using her as like a case study? He, of they, 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 they made her a case study yeah. uh, because of, uh, of the, of the impact. So um, if you lift, if you have strong muscles, unless there's some, something weird going on or really out of the ordinary, you, you have strong bones. That's the way it yeah. works. Next question is from Calico. What are your thoughts on programs like body pump for getting lean? <laughs> terrible. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. You All any, what is it? Just a, Pure circuit training. Right? Body, yeah, body pump it's is cardio. Like, is the yeah, it's cardio the group X classes. Okay. It's a lay. Yeah. It's a Les Mills group class with trash. Yeah, and it's <laughs> it's with. I'm just gonna say it's trash. it's with barbells and dumbbells. But really, what it is is just they're tr they were tra they're capitalizing on strength training. Yeah. Uh, but it's in a circuit fashion. It's cardio. It's really no different. Yeah. Than save your money and go for a run. Yep. Yeah, yep. I mean that the same. You're going to get the same type of benefits. You're getting very, very little benefits of building muscle in a body this. pump class. Now you guys mention it, and it was like a shortened range of motion reps. Yeah, like, it's where they get the little plastic weights. Remember they had the like a little step, and it's like you're yes. stepping and curling I and pressing, this and now. stepping yeah. and curling and pressing, and doing a little dosey -si do, and then you, it's like that yeah. whole class is moving and and lifting and weights. And you have at the, the same group time. dynamic where yep. everybody's yeah. like going There's too fast, like zero rest period. The yeah. only rest period is setting your step your your, your step stacks up or changing the weight that they do every once it's in a, a while. It's a step class with 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 weights. Yeah. Now, now th that doesn't mean there's no benefit. I mean, it's movement. And you, there's always, help, as long as you don't hurt yourself or overdo it, if, as long as it's appropriate, um, you know, it's healthy to move. Yeah, it's just not strength training. It's health, yeah, it's healthy to move. But is there any, is there benefits with a body pump class like you get from strength training? No, zero. It's cardio. It's no different than any other form of cardio, except you're moving the rest of your body or whatever, but really doesn't make that big of a difference. So if you want the benefits of strength training, what makes strength training strength training is le has less to do with the fact that you're lifting weights. Okay, bear with me. How? More the fact that you rest in between sets. Yeah, how you lift weights. Yes, it's about the, you do a set of 8, 12, 15 reps with high enough intensity, right? You got to create tension. And then you rest for two minutes, mm -hmm. and then you repeat it. That rest is what makes it strength training. The no rest is what makes it cardio. And all these, I don't want to say all, but all the ones I know of, uh, of group classes with weights, 
are cardio. Yeah. None of them are real or, or that I've seen are real strength training. And I guess I should be clear on that, right? That you, when I say something like it's trash, it's better than you sitting on the couch and watching TV. Right. Okay. That's it, we're not compared. But if you when when you talk about is it the best way to get lean? First of all, cardio is not even the best way to get lean, right? So the question is, is body pump the, uh, good for getting lean? Well, first of all, uh, cardio is definitely not the best way no. to get mm -hmm. lean in the first place. And so doing a class that is inferior weight training in a cardio fashion is like up there with one of the worst ideas for your your approach to getting lean you'd yeah. be far better off doing traditional strength training or saving your money and just doing cardio if you're going to go that route which yeah, is still yeah. not a great way to get lean that's right the, you know the calories that you burn why you move your body quickly adapts learns to burn less calories oftentimes by paring muscle down so that's why it's not effective and studies confirm this the effective the most effective way to exercise for fat loss is to train in a way to, to increase, muscle. yeah, preserve or build muscle to speed up your metabolism. So you burn more calories at rest all the time. Um, and that's not what body pump does. Next question is from Casey Diaz Smith. Can you take mobility too far, such as knees over toes guy? Well, okay. he's, there's a special, okay. Mm. Can you look up that, that move? Because I'm not familiar with that. I like his content. And yeah, I love him. Yeah, I'm, I we're probably going to support what he I'm says. I'm on point with most of the videos. First, I've let's seen. define mobility. Mobility yeah. is not, not flexibility. Flexibility is a component of mobility, but mobility, the way that we talk about it, is the ability to move through different ranges of motion with strength, control, and stability. Mm -hmm. Okay, under that context, can you go too far with that? No, no, you can't. If you can move in greater ranges of motion and still maintain good control, good stability, and good strength, then it's great. It's great. Yeah. And the greater the ranges of motion that you can do with all that strength and stability and control, the better. Because you have wider ranges of movement and strength. Click on her Instagram. And so. also the work that went into a lot of those ranges of motion. Like I, I guess like just jumping in and watching a video of him doing something where it's like a, an extreme range of motion that he's worked his way towards. Like it that looks like risky. It looks mm -hmm. like a lot of uh, uh, risk of injury. But uh, at that point, like there's a whole there's a whole period of working your way up progressively towards like strengthening each one of those parts of that range of motion. Yeah, yeah I, I don't like, so this Vanja moves or Vanja moves, however you say it, I, I, I'm not familiar with her. Um, so it's tough to comment on someone I haven't gone through their content. But what I can tell you about Knees Over Toes guy, which is his name's Ben something, or I forget his last name. Oh, he's legit. He yeah. is legit. Yeah, and I've yeah. heard him I've heard him talk in long form mm -hmm. and communicate what he is teaching and training. Scroll and so, up Doug a little bit. So what I don't like people right to there. do is to look at some viral girl like this who we're looking at right now on Instagram and you see some crazy, you know, no. flexible thing that she does, and then you want us to comment on it no, and be I like, like her. Oh, that's too far. I'll tell you why I like her. There's two posts right now that I like. The one one says stretching will not make you flexible. Love yeah. that. Scroll yeah. down a little bit, Doug. Look at the next one. Stop stretching. Start strengthening. Yeah. Just based off okay. of those two, I think we can probably estimate or guess that she knows what she's talking about, right? Because yeah. you can take stretching too far. Right. You can give yourself so much flexibility that you have no strength and stability within your new range of motion. And now you've just made yourself more prone to injury. Yeah. So strength is a very important component of mobility. I've never heard of this chick. She, she's got good content. Okay, yeah. we're going through her stuff right now, and everything actually looks pretty damn good, what I see. Yeah, and the only risk, I mean, so yeah, like passive flexibility. Yes, there, there are, there's issues there because, like, especially if you're an athlete and you need to have uh, tension, you need to have a tightness in order to be explosive and, and produce and generate force, right? And so... Um, you know, to have like good fluid movement, you still have to strengthen uh, those those ranges of motion to maintain, uh, you know, your ability to have strength in that flexibility. Yeah. Do you guys remember when that study came out? I want to say it was the late 90s, early 2000s, where they found that because the way that people used to warm up back in the day before athletic endeavors was static stretching. We all did this in PE. Everybody did this in football and baseball, whatever. And then they did a study and found that static stretching Increased risk of injury when mm -hmm. people would go exercise. Everybody freaked out. How is this possible? Well, because what you do when you static stretch is you temporarily increase your range of motion, but there's no strength and stability alongside it. So all you've done is made the person more unstable. We used to be taught to, to breathe your way through and like release, right? And, and to be able to passively sort of like end up in that position yeah. instead of like really like uh, connecting. Connecting. Yeah. So it's totally different um, intention.
Yeah, I, I love her stuff right now. Like, move better, recover faster, and bulletproof your joints with strength and mobility. Yeah, she knows what she's oh, talking yeah, about. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Maybe, we'll, maybe we'll have her on. I'm going to reach out to her. Next question is from Alexis Athletes. Are there other ways alongside foam rolling and stretching to help release tight muscles? Yes. Okay, here's the deal. Okay, stretching, foam rolling gives you temporary relief because it tells the central nervous system to chill out, it tells the CNS to chill out with that tight muscle. But you have to understand why that muscle is tight in the first place. Instability. Right, so here's what happens. Look, your central nervous system is what tells your muscles what to do. It tells your muscles when they can be relaxed. It also tells your muscles when they need to tighten up. And a good example of this is if you stand up and sit down, your CNS is what told the muscles to contract and squeeze for you to stand up and to allow you to sit down. Now, why are some muscles just tight for no reason? I'm here sitting on the couch and my neck is tight or my shoulder's tight or my hip feels tight. What the hell is going on? Well, your CNS has identified that there's some instability somewhere. And the way that it's creating stability is by causing specific muscles to be slightly flexed. It's protective. And if a muscle is slightly flexed all the time, it starts to feel sore it starts to feel not great. And then it feels better when someone pushes on it or you foam roll it or you stretch it. So the best way to alleviate tight muscles is to find out why they're tight in the first place mm -hmm. and create stability uh, through that, through strength exercise, through strength chain exercises, the proper way so that, that your CNS doesn't feel the need to you know tense those muscles all the time. So for example, one of my favorite things to do when I would get a new client, really common for people to have tight neck muscles, really, really common. So easy selling technique for me was someone will come in, oh, you got really tight muscles. I'm going to press on them real quick. They feel a little better. Now let me do some strengthening exercises for some of the muscles that I know that you probably are weak in through other assessments I'd notice that, that, that are going to give you the stability that you need, which is why your CNS is making these other muscles tight. So we would do, for example, like a, a seated cable row where they really pull the shoulders blades back and down. And we do a few sets. Then they'd stand up and they'd go, oh. I can't believe how good my neck feels. Like, what did you just do? And I look like, you know, like I knew magic or something. But really what I did is I temporarily created some stability so the central nervous system could just chill out a little bit. So that's how you solve tight muscles is you create stability where, 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 where it needs to be. Well, and this is really what motivated us to create Prime Pro. So in Prime Pro, we teach you how to go through every major joint in your body and test it both left or right, and see if there's a discrepancy. And even if you don't have chronic pain or you don't have any major issues, I guarantee if there's a major discrepancy from left to right on your, your joint range of motion on one side versus the other, you're going to eventually get tight muscles when you start lifting. That's, right. That's just what's going to happen to the point that Sal's making. And so this is a great way for you to stay ahead of it before it even happens. And then most certainly, if you're battling it all the time, this is how you get to the root cause of it, is you go through those tests, figure out which side where there's this limited range of motion, and then you do the exercises that we program in there to support that. Exactly. Look, if you like fitness and you like Mind Pump and you want good information and you want to ask us a question, here's what you do. Go to askmindpump.com. It's an AI model that will answer your questions about fitness and nutrition based off of all of our episodes. So you know the information's good and it comes out basically in our voice. It's a pretty remarkable AI model. So it's askmindpump.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin's at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 